over the last five months, if you've been following me on LinkedIn or maybe just checking in here occasionally, I have obtained over 10 different IT and cybersecurity certifications from CompTIA, ISC Squared, and one from IDLE, and one from LPI. So those certifications are the A+, Network+, CC, which is Certified in Cybersecurity, Security+, IDLE 4 Foundations, LPI, Linux Essentials, Project+, Plus. I passed the SSCP exam and I'll be awarded that certification when I complete my degree in a week or two, CYSA+, Plus. and finally, just two days ago, I passed my final exam for the college degree that I'm in, Pentest+. Plus. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, this has all been completely accomplished from beginning to end in under five months. And I came in with no prior full-time IT experience. I did different projects and I worked on different things. And if you look in my resume and you look at the jobs that I performed, you could say that I've worked a little bit with technology, but it's mainly just been uh, through different random experience and things like that. Nothing specifically oriented in technology. In terms of when I started even learning anything about cybersecurity, I started a boot camp in October of last year, which is 2022. And I did a boot camp that was basically supposed to prepare me for Network Plus, Security Plus, and CYSA Plus. I think that accurately the boot camp prepared me for Security Plus. In a way, I don't think I would have been able to take Security Plus exam and pass after that, but I think a lot of the concepts in it were more solidified when I studied a little bit down the line. Uh, I started my degree in March of this year, which was when I started on this path into getting the vouchers through my degree to take these certifications and pass them. And that has been a total of March up till now, which is July 28th. And so I've done all of this in a rapid time. And I think that there's a lot of people out there that kind of look at me like, do you have a life? You know, have you been sleeping at night? Have you been eating? Are you spending time with your family? And kind of act like, you know, or do you even have a job? You know, are you just sitting and studying all day? and you're not actually uh, you know, working or doing anything. So the answer to all of that, I am not a superhuman. I am not some major intelligent you know, being that is just far above everybody else. There's plenty of people that have done stuff like this before. There's plenty of people who have earned these certifications and worked through these programs fast and faster than me. And so I just wanna share though in this video how I've been able to do it, coming from basically no experience. Up until the end of June, I have been working in a warehouse environment for the last four and a half years up to that point. Currently, I'm employed as a technology supervisor where I basically ensure the proper functionality and security of an organization that has over 200 employees basically helping them out, making sure the network is secure and things like that. And I've got a lot of free range to do a lot of different security projects and just make sure that the environment gets more secure every day. So I'm very thankful for the job that I'm in now. But up until that, full time, I was working doing just warehouse work, whether it was working in a freezer at a distribution center or working in a, you know, just hot regional distribution center. It wasn't a lot of fun work. But I got sick of it and I wanted to get out of it. And so I enrolled at Western Governors University and went through their bachelor's in cybersecurity and information assurance. And I really didn't have the money to go through that program. And I pretty much rolled the dice because what a lot of people do is they go into the program and they transfer every single course that they can paying a third party. Uh, just, I guess it's just basically a place for you to earn college credit and you can pay them. They will help you you know, gain and earn college credit, and then you can transfer that in so you have less to do it and basically make it a more affordable bachelor's degree. Well, I pretty much rolled the dice and just got in based off of projects that I've done in the past and different work history and things like that, where I was able to source different IT and sort of cybersecurity work that I did, which was completely legitimate. I didn't lie on my resume, you know, but so things like that and other part-time roles that I had. 
but so I was able to get in based off of that zero transfer credits and I'm probably gonna end up finishing the entire degree in about five and a half months probably even a little bit less than that so how did I manage to do it and get through all of this well I'm gonna make a second video about that but specifically today I just want to talk about the certifications and specifically just kind of what my method is for studying because a lot of times people will look and it's just like, how did you manage to get that many certifications done in such a short time period? Because there's people that will, you know, look at an exam like Pen Test Plus that I just passed a couple days ago. And these are exams that people are taking literally months to prepare for. And I don't think there's anything wrong with taking months to prepare for these exams. But if you ask me how long I prepared for it in terms of specifically sitting down and studying strictly Pen Test Plus, four days. And it's not like, you know, the material is completely covered in four days, but those four days I basically used to go through practice questions, fill in gaps of knowledge, and then I went and I took the test and I was able to pass it. Now, the way that I prepare for certifications though, the reason that I'm able to do that is because of work that I did months ago before I even started going through college that being try hack me try hack me is in my opinion the most affordable best cybersecurity learning platform that is out there i'm not endorsed by try hack me in any way i never have been i've never even been in contact with people at try hack me but that platform is incredible i started that platform probably around november or december as I was going through Thinkful, I just wanted to pick up as much cybersecurity stuff as I could, and so I went over there. And in my time over there, I completed the Introduction to Cybersecurity Learning Path, I completed the uh, Introduction to Web Fundamentals or Web Applications or something like that. I did the Junior Penetration Testing Path, uh, I did the Pre-Security Learning Path, and I did about 75% of the SOC Level 1 Path. I probably should have not 100% of it, but that's another story for another day. Um, you know, so going through all of that, what that basically consists of is every single room that's in these learning paths is dropping you into a real lab environment where you are controlling the command line, you're controlling the terminal inside of either a Kali Linux machine or an Ubuntu machine, and you are figuring out how to hack into different machines or you're figuring out how to basically perform the role of a security analyst and use the different tools that a security analyst uses to analyze traffic and figure out who the intruder is and get them out basically. So I spent months doing nothing but try hack me in terms of my learning. When I started college, I stopped because it was just too much to try to manage it all and also try to get all this degree done while I could. But when I stopped, I finished up and I think I came in at about 139 day streak before I just let it go because I didn't have time to continue to do both of those things. However, all of the work that I was able to do on Try Hack Me, I believe is what has prepared me to do all the different certifications and the work that I did in college to be able to do it so quickly. Now, what I mean by that is when I tell you how long did you study for Pen Test Plus, and I say it only took me four days, what I actually mean is is that I spent four days brushing up, going over some practice questions, and specifically seeing how CompTIA wanted me to answer certain questions and what CompTIA thought the best methodology was for something like penetration testing. And before that, months ago, I spent hours upon hours upon hours treating it like a second full-time job, doing everything that I could to learn about penetration testing on Try Hack Me. So that when I got to this, it was basically this review of what I already done for CYSA, which I passed a couple weeks ago. That was basically just review of everything that I learned on Try Hack Me in the SOC Level 1 path. The reason that I'm saying this is because when you look at the exam objectives, you know, you can go down and you can look at the domains and that's what everybody focuses on is, hey, what's covered in this exam? And you can look at the percentage of the domains and how they're weighted on the exam. And I have all that stuff pulled up here, 
But you know what? That's not the stuff that's important. You can look and you can become a trivia master and you can look at every single exam objective. You can look at every single uh, point within each domain and see what it is and memorize it and answer 30 questions about each one of them and sit and just know fully what it is. But I think that the important thing to do is to open up the exam objectives and basically see what they're looking for in terms of someone that can take this exam and ideally pass it. The recommended experience for Pen Test Plus is three to four years of hands-on experience performing penetration tests, vulnerability assessments, and code analysis. So for my preparation for this exam, it wasn't necessarily, I need to go get three to four years of all that different type of experience, but it was more so just in my mind thinking to myself, okay, what does somebody that has three to four years of hands-on experience performing penetration tests, vulnerability assessments, and code analysis, what knowledge do they have over the domains that are listed in this exam? And a way to simulate that is to basically go on a try hack meet, use these tools, use it and get a hands-on experience analyzing it and doing it. You know what comes through experience is being able to just look at a snippet of code and understand what it does and understand what type of attack the person's using it for and what their objectives are with that. You have to know that type of stuff for the CYSA plus exam and the Pentest plus exam. You just do. That's what a lot of the questions are, is just giving an output that comes from a command line and basically telling me what it does and what the person was trying to do or, you know, saying that you tried to do something that was unsuccessful. How does someone know that? Well, based off of experience, because you can look at that and you can understand it. I think the problem is when people have such a hard time with these certifications is because you're trying to become a trivia master. You're trying to learn as many questions as you can. You're trying to memorize your way through the test and answer literally over a thousand practice questions to then sit down and take the exam and just all the memory that you've stored up in your head of every practice question, you dump it out on the screen when you're taking the test, you get the congratulations you passed with a high score, maybe even a higher score than I did, but then a month from now, if I sat you back down in front of that computer and I asked you to take that exam with no more study, do you think you could pass it? I think a lot of people probably say no because you're studying it basically in the way that someone would learn trivia, not actually applying it to real world situations. And the real world situation for these two exams specifically and pretty much every other exam that I've done is able to be simulated in some type of learning environment. And I think one of the most important things that you need to do if you're looking to go through these exams and you're looking to go through the certifications is find real world applications for them. If you're studying for A+, that's talking about help desk. And I'm pretty sure it asks you that you're gonna have knowledge between about zero to nine months worth of knowledge and experience. Uh, performing help desk roles. So you need to think, okay, what would help desk be? What would someone that's been in help desk for nine months understand? And that exam isn't that advanced, but there's a wide variety of concepts because when you're working in a help desk type of role, you're gonna have people coming to you with a wide variety of issues that you need to know a general understanding of how to fix it or why something's gone wrong with it. So I want you to think when you're looking for certifications or if you're wondering, how are you such a superhuman? It's not that I'm a superhuman. It's not that I don't sleep. It's not that I don't spend time with my family. It's that I'm not looking at this stuff the way that other people look at it. You need to look at stuff based on what they want you to know and basically what they expect out of you. As someone that holds the Pen Test Plus certification, what does CompTIA expect that I know going into that exam? Someone that holds the SSCP certification in a couple of weeks when I finish my degree. What does ISC squared expect that an SSCP knows when I go to take the CCSP exam or the CISSP exam down the line? What does ISC squared expect that one of those individuals who possesses that certification knows? That is how you're gonna pass these exams. 
Do not waste your time sitting and watching a 30 hour video series that's just a textbook recited to you about all the information that you need for this certification. And I know you might be thinking, well, you just learn differently than I do. You're missing the point of the certification. A certification is supposed to be there to validate experience. If you hold a certification in IT or cybersecurity, someone should be able to look at you and say, hey, you have the knowledge that someone who's done this for a couple years now has that same exact you know, experience. Now, the problem is, is that people get really frustrated with CompTIA or they get really frustrated with ISC squared or basically any certification body because there's a lot of people who hold these certifications, but they don't have that experience or they don't even have close to the knowledge that they need. And honestly, I really believe that's a result of just memorizing your way through a test and doing it. And the way that I've been able to do all this is by not doing that and not listening to what everybody else says to do. You have to find out ultimately what works best for you. But I'm telling you, these certifications are meant to validate your experience. If you're just going through and memorizing your way through tests, you might be able to pass it, you might be able to hold your experience. But then when it comes to actually utilizing certifications to get a job, it's not gonna work. And that's a whole other video for another day. But basically at the end of the day, I know I didn't talk a ton about it in this video, what I want to get across to you is hands-on experience. And if you're trying to learn cybersecurity and you're trying to learn anything about IT and just working your way into a cybersecurity role, I cannot recommend a better platform than TryHackMe. And if you're having a hard time on TryHackMe, you've come to the right place because on this channel, I offer tons of walkthroughs and especially now that I'm winding down college, I'm almost done. I got all the certifications knocked out that I need to. I'm really going to be able to start putting a lot more time and effort into this. So I hope you were able to get a little bit of an insight into my mind. Just real quick recap. It's not about memorizing your way through the test. It's not about becoming a trivia master. It's about learning the concepts equivalent to the level of experience, ex equivalent to the knowledge of someone with the level of experience that they want you, the exam body wants you to know. So for Pen Test Plus, you should go into that exam with equivalent knowledge that someone who's been doing this for years knows. Same exact thing with CYSA Plus, same exact thing with CASP, same exact thing with CISSP, CCSP, any one of them. I believe this is a universal principle. Do not try to memorize trivia. Do everything you can to memorize concepts and learn concepts and be able to sit down on a computer and apply the concepts. If you can do that, I confidently believe that you'll be able to sit down in front of these exams and knock them all out. And I think you can probably do it even faster than I did. This is not an impossible feat. It's not something that I'm just the superhuman or that IT is just a magical thing to me and I'm able to understand it better than anybody else. I think that there's just too many people that are being misled about the way that these exams are done. And I really wanted to make this video to share my mindset with it. So if this video was helpful to you, share it, like it, subscribe. It really helps me. It inspires me to keep pushing content out like this. So please do me a favor and do that. Be sure to subscribe to Full Sense Cyber, which is a podcast that I do with a friend of mine named Paul Keystead. He's accomplished even more than me, probably about double in terms of certifications and degrees and everything. He's done a great job of this, and we talk about a lot of the same stuff all the time over on the Full Sense Cyber podcast. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you around next time for a try hacking walkthrough or maybe another video like this.